Hey guys, I'm gonna do a full walkthrough through my home studio and with all the gears I currently own right now. And with all these gears, this may be something you would have interest in purchasing for on your own. But one of the first things I purchased was the V-Studio 100, which was about probably $600. And that's when I used Sonar way back then. I didn't just one day pull out all this money and then purchase all my gears, it took time. So the type of computer that I'm currently using right now is a 2008 Mac Pro. The type of version is the 10.6, which I actually upgraded to 10.8. And for some reason, the Axiom Pro stopped working. So if you're thinking about getting a, a Mac Pro computer, then make sure it's not a 2008 or you'll, you'll end up with problems. Now the type of interface that I'm currently using, which is the, the analog to to digital converter is the Avid HDIO. Now this costed about a thousand dollars brand new on eBay which they sell it a lot more online like Sweetwater or Guitar Center but it's a cheap high quality gear that I really like. Now the current DAW that I'm using is the digital audio workstation is Pro Tools 10 and I started using Pro Tools because that was just something I saw a lot on YouTube and when I went to school at Columbia College in Chicago, they made us use Pro Tools. So that's what I started using most of the time. Now the type of microphones that I currently own right now, which I actually own a few, is the Rode K2, which I mainly use those for vocals, but you can actually use it for almost literally anything. Um, and I own a Blueberry, which I pretty much use it for mainly for hip hop vocals. And I own two AKG 414s, which I mainly use those for, for like guitars, and um, an SM57. I also use that for a guitar to give it a different type of sound instead of having two microphones sounding the same. And then I own um, a D112, which I use that for, for bass or for drums, kick drums, and an Audix D6, which I also use that for bass and kick drums. Now what I use to record vocals inside of my home studio is the SC Electronic Reflection Filter. Um, it does an okay job and stuff, but what it doesn't fix is the outside sound or ambient sound of cars driving by. So that's one thing you're gonna have to kind of deal with. And if you're gonna decide to use a reflection filter rather than a vocal booth, for, for female vocals, it kind of makes them a little bit thinner and it sort of makes it harder for them to sit in the track of the song. So that's kind of something you have to think about if you're going to purchase it. So for the type of preamps that I currently own right now is the API 512C and the Gap 73. So for the API, I, I sort of got into the API because when I was in school we were using the API Legacy Plus Console and when we would record drums I would really like the sound of the drums. So that's why I just started decided to, um, to purchase those types of preamps. And for the, the Gap 73, it was cheap, you know, it's really good and gets the job done. The type of patch bay that I currently own, not use, but own, is the Redco patch bay. And I don't really use it now because I need more DB25 cables. And DB25 cables are kind of pricey. And I only use Mogami cables, so... That's the problem why. So if you'd want the microphone to go into the interface, you just patch it from microphone to the interface. And that's simple. What patch bay do is it just pretty much makes life easier instead of you having to go back of your table or, or your console and, and moving cables from places to places. So for the type of monitor control that I currently use is the Dangerous Music D-Box. Now this one is really cool because it actually allows you to stem each track into its own group. So for instance, if you want to have um, drums in group 1 and 2, vocals in 3, bass in 4, gu guitar 5 and 6, and then um, effects in 7 and 8, and it'll just group it all up into its track and and it allows you to raise the volume up a little bit more and you won't even have to clip off of it. And another cool thing about it is um, it has a mono button where everything just goes straight to the center. And if, 
if you put things in the center and you can't hear certain things, that means it's too far or too close or it's just in the way. And it, it, it allows you to know what you need to fix or not. So for the type of monitor, monitors that I use is the, the Neumann KH120 and the 810. Now the 120 is, is the small one and the 810 is the subs. And if you do not get hit by a car and sue someone like what happened to me, you probably won't be able to buy these. So, but um, I really like these and I bought it at pretty much Guitar Center and online. And um, I don't want to really get in depth about this because everyone has their own opinion about which speakers are best, such as um, KRKs and Atoms and ATCs. But I really like these, so this is helps me get my work done. The sub may be omnidirectional, and the reason why I bought two of the subs is because if you put the sub on the floor right in front of you, the table, the console, the desk, it will block the sub and if you do so it will it will change the frequency of the sound and that's how it tricks your ear and the two type of headphones that i use is the the sony 7506 and the biodynamics dt770 and the only time i really use it is to pretty much listen to the song when i'm almost done or or if i want to like listen to the snare i really like the snare on the the 7506 it sounds really good for the Axiom Pro 49, I don't really use it because of the whole Mac Pro 10.6, 10.8 problem. And since I upgraded it, it doesn't allow me to use it in Pro Tools or any other software. So I sort of just stopped using it and I'll probably just get rid of it. So for the acoustic guitars that I currently own is a Michelle's and a Samick, which one was giving to a friend of mine, which he never really played guitar. And then my cousin just had a guitar and he probably never used it and it was just lying there. So he just gave it to me, so I took it. And for the electric guitar that I own is a an Ibanez RG series, which I'm into sort of like metal, so that's why I really like that guitar. And um, I use like different distortions, metal distortions, so I really like the, the Ibanez with it. And for the bass guitar, I have a Fender Squire five string bass, which I bought it when I was probably 15. So it's been a while. So I don't really use it that much because I was in a lot of bands and stuff. I have a lot of people when they're in high school, they're in bands and then bands split and then, then they find another band and that band splits. And then after your fifth band, you kind of just give up in being bands and stuff and and then you move on with your life and then you become an accountant or something. The electric guitar amp that I only use right now is the, the Bagura 333XL212. And it's pretty much used for like metal and blues and stuff. And, the, and I use the, the Digitech um, Metal Master, which it sounds pretty good. And that's the only one that I currently use. So out of all the other pedals and stuff, I don't really know how they sound or I've never compared the two so that's all I use for right now on that and that's all the gears I pretty much own right now um, most of the stuff that I've purchased was pretty much used and I believe the complete total of it was probably about twenty five thousand dollars that I have spent on gears so if you're a person who likes to buy brand new gears it would probably be around like maybe thirty five thousand dollars so if you have thirty five thousand dollars and you like new gears Go ahead, it's your choice. And that is all for now. That was a walkthrough of my home studio and the type of gears that I've owned. If you liked the video, then click the like button. And if you have any questions, leave a comment at the bottom. And if you'd like to learn more about audio, then just subscribe to my channel. Okay, thanks. Bye.